Hello and welcome to day two of skincare week. Today we are going to be talking about an eye cream and specifically the Belief Moisturizing Eye Balm Eye Cream. I have been using this for about six weeks. I have really gone back and forth on my thoughts on it but then have a definite opinion that I've come to in the end. But what we are going to do is talk a little bit about Belief as a company, uh, because I have not reviewed any of their products on my channel before. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this product. We're gonna talk a little bit about the ingredients in it. I'm going to show you how I've been applying it and then give you my thoughts and review at the end. Timestamps are down below. Let's start talking about Belief. Belief was fairly recently, I believe maybe in 2017, bought by a umbrella company called uh, The Nature Collection. The Nature Collection is also uh, the company that owns the Face Shop. I've done a review on Face Shop products before, it's also of Korean beauty brands. Um, now, I will say, be careful signing up for anything <laughs> under Nature Collection. I had signed up for a card at the Face Shop, and because of that, I have been getting like daily emails from the Nature Collection, and it took me a while to figure out why I was getting them. So they do kind of spam you with email if you decide to sign up for anything. The brand Belief, uh, their tagline is Believe in Truth. Their basic premise is that they take time-trusted apothecary and blend it together with modern Korean skincare science. So basically they say that they take like herbs and things in nature, um, things that have shown over time to have benefits to the skin, but then also fuse it with a very science-based approach. They say, meet the most truthful cosmetic brand that is formulated with superior ingredients and efficacy in the safest and most honest way possible. Now, I believe Belief products at one point were sold in Sephora. I don't see it coming up anymore in Sephora in Canada, so I'm not sure if that has changed. But you are, they're not the most high-end expensive, uh, I shouldn't say high-end, they're not the most expensive skincare brand, um, but they're more expensive than what you're gonna get at the drugstore. Uh, and to illustrate that, let's specifically talk about this eye cream. This obviously is a little tiny sample that I received in most likely an Ipsy subscription. Uh, if you buy the full size of this, it's going to be $48 US, so probably be closer to $70 here in Canada. And while that is a high price, it's not as pricey as a lot of eye creams out there that can be $100, $150, $170. Um, so again, while it's not drugstore, it's not the most expensive skincare either. As I mentioned, this is called the Moisturizing Eye Balm. This lightweight, refreshing, silky textured eye cream floods fine lines with 26 hours of moisture, boosts elasticity, and increases resilience for skin of skin for flawless makeup application. So they are saying that you can use this at the start of the day to smooth out your under eyes for your makeup. It's lightweight, uh, and it is. It's a very gel-like texture. It's not like a thick cream. It's very uh, serum-y in the way that it actually applies like you're not going to get you know a thick creamy cream under your eyes with this so in their description of the product they say that it is formulated with hydrating herb comfrey leaf and elasticity boosting pennywort herb the moisturizing eye balm provides a flood of intensive moisture for radiant and youthful looking eyes this cooling texture instantly bursts with hydration and blends seamlessly keeping the eye area supple and hydrated while prepping it for a smooth crease-free makeup application it's made without parabens, sulfates, phthalates, mineral oil, petroleum, synthetic preserves, synthetic dyes, synthetic fragrances, and animal origin ingredients, which makes me think that it is vegan, but I don't believe it is cruelty-free. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I didn't see anything claiming for it to be cruelty-free. So I feel like I'm gonna do this in a slightly different way. Uh, I'm gonna tell you sort of my experience with it, and then one thing that happened that solidified my opinion of this. I know that sounds a little mysterious, but let's just go with it. So I really kind of went back and forth on this and was feeling a little middle of the road on it because there are things that I like about this. It does have that really nice gel texture that goes on and smooths. It feels like it sinks in really easily. You're not, you know, messing around with it, trying to get it to uh, sink in. And I really didn't have any trouble with putting this on and then applying makeup. It didn't interfere with my concealer or my foundation in any way. Uh, and it did feel, it does feel like it, I put some on this morning, that it has a uh, very moisturizing, hydrating, smoothing feeling to it. Uh, it wasn't like 
the most noticeable thing in the world, but it definitely did, you know, do what it said it would do. It smoothed, it moisturized. I don't, I get a little bit of the cooling, uh, but I think a bit of that cooling comes from something that made me a little hesitant about this as well. This has a very herbal scent to it. And there's a quality to it that is almost like the Vicks Vapo Rub kind of thing, and I'm trying to think of what that is. But that cooling that happens when you put something on and it kind of um, has that feeling like a Vicks Vapo Rub, because it has a little bit of cooling to it. My issue with that is having that near my eyes, I always worried was going to be a little bit irritating. And there were a couple of times wearing this where I felt like my eyes are watering a bit, not because of this, but my eyes are watering and some that maybe got into my eyes and then felt like it was stinging a little bit, but I could never really be sure if it was the eye cream that was doing that or maybe something else I was wearing that day or maybe the cleanser that I used that day. Uh, I did find, and this puts me off a little bit, if I ever had like a little scratch or something near my eye um, and put this on, it stung. And it always makes me a little concerned when skincare does anything that stings on my skin because then I worry that it's maybe harsher than it should be or there's something alcohol-like in it that is making that stinging happen. Um, so I really kind of waffled on this one because it wasn't a result that was so out of this world amazing that I was like, yes, I am going to keep using this one. There was one eye cream that I felt like that with. I believe it was the Organic Pharmacy. That one, it was like I could see the difference it was making in my under eyes. The problem was that I am a cheap person and it was an expensive eye cream. Uh, I'll link that video down below. So I was kind of waffling back and forth about this and then I started doing a little bit more research into it. Um, and that is where my opinion changed. The one thing that I will mention as well is I did see one uh, reference to this eye cream being the a best-selling Sephora eye cream in 2017. So a lot of people really like this. So let's get into that research that I did. So they talk about two active ingredients in here, uh, comfrey leaf and pennywort herb or herb, depending on how you say it. Uh, so pennywort, I did a bit of research into, and we'll talk about that one first. Uh, it has a number of names for it, like the technical names of the plant and all of that. So it's also called Centella Asiatica, often just called Centella. It's rich in amino acids, beta carotene, fatty acids, and numerous potent phytochemicals. Extracts have been found to calm inflammation, speed wound healing, stimulate uh, new cell growth, build collagen, and improve circulation. Uh, lately, thanks to a new round of research into this ingredient's wound healing and skin rejuvenating properties, it's been turning up in a host of new skin treatments. So a 2012 study, uh, research applied a concentrate of Centella Asiatica to the skin of rats with open wounds. Sorry, I know talking about rats with wounds in a skincare video isn't that lovely, but it found that the formulation of this, of this herb uh, inhibited bacterial growth, fueled the growth of new skin cells, and increased skin's tensile strength and resilience. So that ingredient seems like a really good thing to have in skincare, to have in eye cream, that it does what it says about boosting elasticity and all of that. So that was great. I, you know, no problem with that ingredient at all. Then we get into comfrey leaf, and this feels like something I don't want anywhere near my skin. So comfrey is a plant. Even though this plant contains poisonous chemicals called pyrolizidine alkaloids, the leaf root and root-like stem are used to make medicine. The amount of PAs, which is the short form for that poisonous chemical, found in comfrey changes according to the time of harvesting and the age of the plant. The roots have 10 times more PAs than the leaves. So the leaves, which is what is used in this, is not quite as poisonous, but that still doesn't sound good. Comfrey in traditional medicine is often taken internally, and that's really where the problem is. It's used for upset stomach, ulcers, uh, diarrhea, persistent cough, pain, a whole bunch of things. But then it's also applied to the skin in traditional medicine, uh, and can be used for ulcers, wounds, joint inflammation, bruises, rheumatoid arthritis, swollen veins, fractures, all kinds of stuff. So I won't go right into, you know, how this works and everything. But it says that comfrey is likely unsafe when taken by the mouth. We're not worried about that here because we're not eating it. Uh, but comfrey is possibly safe for most people when applied to unbroken skin in small amounts for less than 10 days. 
It's important to remember that the poisonous chemicals in comfrey can pass through the skin. Absorption of these chemicals increases if the skin is broken or large amounts are applied. How is this in an eye cream that I am putting on my eyes and have been for the last six weeks until I did the research for this video? Uh, uh, special warnings. Uh, pregnancy and breastfeeding. Comfrey is likely unsafe to take by mouth or apply to the skin if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. In addition to causing liver damage and possibly cancer, the PAs in comfrey might also cause birth defects. Even topical use is unwise since the PAs can be absorbed through the skin. Don't use it if you have broken or damaged skin. Don't use it if you have liver disease. Don't use it. <laughs> Just don't use it. Why would I ever want to use a product with that ingredient in it. Why are they saying that that ingredient is in it like it's a good thing? Uh, that last bit of information there I did get from WebMD specifically, but I found a number of other articles relaying the same thing about, you know, it's maybe safe if you use it short term on your skin. Um, but again, don't use if you have liver damage, don't use if you're pregnant, just don't use. So, you know, I often don't come in here with like really strong opinions on you need this or don't ever buy this, but I feel like I can say for this one, don't buy it. Why would you mess around with something that is shown to be unsafe for a mediocre eye cream? <laughs> so there, that is this review. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more uh, about some of these ingredients. I know I'm going to be looking for things with pennywort in it and also looking for things with comfrey in it to just stay away from. Uh, if you have used this cream before, if you've enjoyed it or maybe are concerned now that you've been using it, or if there are other amazing eye creams at reasonable prices that I should be trying because I would love to find one, please let me know all of that in the comments down below. I do try to respond to every comment that I get. If you like this review, uh, even though it was a little bit negative, or a lot negative, give this video a thumbs up, hit the bell so you can be notified for the rest of skincare week. We are doing seven skincare videos over seven days. And if you missed the first one, I will link the playlist down below. I think that's everything I'm gonna say. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.